want them to end now. Yeah. These policies were made by people, and people can unmake them. Yeah. There is nothing inevitable or unsolvable about this conflict. Woo! Support from Jewish institutions like Combined Jewish Philanthropies and the Jewish Community Relations Council of Boston that speak for the organized American Jewish community enable the Israeli government to continue the oppressive policies like the ones I just talked about. And as young Jews, we do not consent to being represented by Jewish institutions that condone these policies. We believe that there is a better way to achieve peace. So we're spreading our message far and wide. We want American Jewish institutions to know that they can no longer simply stand by Israel's, by the side of Israeli people without also standing by the side of Palestinian people. So we are in the middle, middle of the festival of Sukkot and the primary observance of this holiday is to build a sukkah. Um, and so we have, we have these, uh, these walls going around. This is our mobile sukkah. We have created a mobile sukkah outside of the JCRC and CJP building. And the sukkah and this festival of Sukkot highlights the Jewish obligation, the sacred obligation, the mitzvah of hospitality, of hachnasat orfim. Because we not only dwell inside of the sukkah for for a week, we also invite others. We also welcome others into the sukkah. And so we are here. We have put these, these walls of the sukkah that are going around us. They are here because we take seriously the obligation of living a Judaism and building a Jewish community that is open and welcoming. Yes. Woo! 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 This, these, these, these walls of the sukkah that are going around they also speak to a metaphor in contemporary Jewish life. And that's in contrast to building an open and welcoming Jewish community. The term Jewish tent is often used to symbolize who is allowed to be in and who is pushed out of the Jewish community. And here in Boston, the CJP, the Combined Jewish Philanthropies, and JCRC, the Jewish Community Relations Council, draw red lines around the Jewish tent forcing people in or out based on whether or not they support Israel in a particular way. So we are here on Sukkot. We have these walls of the, of the Sukkah going around us in circles right now to symbolize that we need an open and welcoming Jewish community. Can I hear that? Open and welcoming Jewish community. I want to repeat after me. Open and welcoming Jewish community. Open and welcoming Jewish community. Um, so we're going to hear a personal story from Danny Moscovich about um, why she's here. Each of us has a story about why we're here, why we've taken time out of our day to come here and be here. So we're going to hear one of those stories now, um, and then and then uh, Rosa is going to share the demands that we have for uh, for, for JCRC and CJP. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Um, my name is Danny Moscovich, and I am a proud member of the Boston Jewish community. Um, in June, I graduated from the Join for Justice Jewish Organizing Fellowship. I attend Shabbat and Rosh Chodesh rituals at Moshe Kabod House. And I'm a teacher at the Workman Circle, where last year I taught seventh graders and mentored them as they prepared for their bar and bat mitzvahs. The Workman Circle Center for Jewish Culture and Social Justice. Um, a few years ago, I was studying abroad in Israel at the uh, Tel Aviv University. Um, and on the weekends, I would go visit my family in Matula, which is in northern Israel, at their bed and breakfast, where they've lived and worked for years. Um, and I remember um, eating homemade shakshuka on their porch and walking down the block um, to the fence where I would stick my finger through, and my finger would be in Lebanon. And they would tell me stories about sitting on their roof deck and watching the rockets go back and forth like fireworks. Um, and I remember thinking, this feels like a home for me whenever I went there. Can you all hear me? Yes. A little louder. So later that semester, it was Yom Hatzma'ut, which is Israeli Independence Day, which is the day that marks um, Israeli independence.
independence from 1948. And I learned from some classmates that Palestinians call it by a different name. They call it Nakba, which means the day of catastrophe. Because in the days leading up to Israeli independence, over 700,000 Palestinians were displaced, many were killed, villages and communities were destroyed. And so I learned that the Arab and some Arab and Palestinian students at the university were gathering together outside of the university gates to read the names of all the lives lost and all the people displaced, of their family members, of those whose homes were destroyed. So I decided to go. And when I got there, I was very surprised. I saw about 30 or 40 Arab and Palestinian students standing with no microphone or megaphone because they were not allowed to have one, reading names from paper and praying and crying peacefully. And surrounding them, I saw hundreds of Israeli students and some American students from my program with huge loudspeakers and megaphones and tens of Israeli flags and they were yelling, go home. This is not your land. You don't belong here. And they were throwing food. And then I saw one Israeli student burn a cardboard cutout of a Palestinian flag. When I saw that, I made a choice to walk into the center of the circle with the Arab and Palestinian students and stand with them. While I was standing there, I looked up and five or six feet from my face were these two Israeli students with a huge Israeli flag and the big, huge, blue and white Jewish star was right in my face and I looked at them and they were screaming, you dirty Arabs, go home. You don't belong here. And I was looking at that star and it, this symbol of, of me, this is a symbol that represents me as a Jew and in that moment I felt filled with shame. And it was in that moment that I conflated Judaism with the hatred and anger and violence that I saw in their faces. I conflated Judaism with the silencing of the Palestinians I was standing with. And I realized in the moment that if that's what it means to be Jewish, then there is no room for me in the Jewish community. So now as I stand here, I can tell you today that I've decided that should not be true. I've decided, and many of us have decided, that that does not have to be true. And over the past five years, here in Boston, I've become continually involved in the Jewish community here. And the institutions, the Jewish institutions that I am a part of have become my home. Judaism has a place in my life, but it cannot look like this. It can't look like this. So this summer, when Gaza was under attack, the combined Jewish philanthropies and the Jewish Community Relations Council, who work in those buildings right here that we're standing out in front of, blindly supported Israel and its policies as thousands of Palestinians were killed in my name, in your name. And they said, and I quote, it's not complicated. Like the Arab students outside of Tel Aviv University, again, Palestinian voices and stories and suffering were being silenced. And as a Jew, as a growing community of Jews who do not stand for that, we are being drowned out by another kind of loudspeaker right now, and it's coming from this building. And even though it's loud, it's really loud, we know that they do not speak for us. But they need to. So today we're here, and I'm so grateful to be here with all of you in our, our mobile sukkah. <laughs> to call upon CJP and JCRC to publicly call 
for freedom and dignity for all in the region. And we call upon them to stay true to the Jewish values that have grounded me so wholly in the Boston Jewish community. And we call upon them to act upon the values they have written on the cement. loving kindness and I hope that they do so that I can look at a flag with a star of David on it and not feel shame not feel separate but see myself in it again institutions to publicly recognize that all human life, both Israeli and Palestinian, is created in the image of God, B'Tselem Elohim, and is therefore precious and worthy of respect. To publicly state opposition to the occupation of the West Bank and East Jerusalem, as well as the blockade of Gaza, and to publicly call for a comprehensive diplomatic solution that includes an immediate freeze on all construction and approval of new settlements. Woo. Yeah. Woo. 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 So thank you all so much for being here today. I think we should sing a few songs before we go. And um, I appreciate your presence and your spirit and let's keep this moving. Okay.